Hi, I'm Drew Goebel with the Cincinnati Parks Conservation and Land Management Team. And we're here today in Alms Park to talk about an invasive vine that's a threat to our natural areas called porcelainberry. So why is porcelainberry a problem? Porcelainberry was introduced to the United States in the 1870s as an ornamental plant, and since then it has escaped and formed wild populations, becoming a major problem in the northeastern United States. And it is now invading the Midwest and can be found in our natural areas, including the Cincinnati Park System, the roadsides, and various woodlots throughout the city. Porcelainberry is a woody deciduous vine, which means it drops all of its leaves in the fall, but the vine remains throughout the season. It prefers to grow in edge habitats, which are usually full sun, like the one behind me, or park shade. It grows very, very fast. Porcelainberry can grow up to 20 feet in one season, which is faster than all of our native trees. That gives it the ability to form these dense blankets of vegetation, which compete for resources such as light, nutrients, and water. It will form these dense mats that can crush smaller vegetation and even shade out larger trees. Porcelain berry can spread when birds and other animals eat the berries and then distribute them to new locations. When this plant displaces native vegetation, it reduces biodiversity and the amount of food available for native wildlife. Wild grapes, which it competes with, are an important source for wildlife, food source for wildlife. Wild grapevine is a host to the Pandora sphinx moth and many other native insects. Porcelain berry can probably not support all of these organisms. Moths that live on native grapes are important pollinators and their caterpillars are an essential high protein food for baby birds. You won't get that with porcelain berry. So how do you identify porcelain berry? It's most likely to be confused with our native grapes. Let's take a look at the leaves. The leaves of porcelain berry can be highly variable. Some of them can look more like our native grape leaves, like this one here, but they can also be deeply lobed. This one has some lobes in it. The more mature ones can get even deeper lobes like this one here. Our native grapevine leaves are usually more heart-shaped, but the fox grape can also have lobes in the leaves. Since the leaves of porcelain berry and native grapes can be very similar, we want to look at other characteristics of the plant too. Um, both of them climb with tendrils, which are these little structures right here. They're an appendage on the plant that can wrap around branches um, or grip knobby surfaces on bark or even shove itself into crevices and expand. That's how the plant climbs other things around it. Let's take a look at the bark as well. So here we have the native grapevine right next to a larger porcelain berry. The native grapevine, as it ages, the bark starts to peel off in these long strips in the same direction that the vine is growing. Porcelain berry gets more chunky at this size. And another thing to note is that if you look down at where it's emerging from the ground, porcelain berry forms these root crowns at the ground surface and then has roots that go out in all directions that can form new plants and sprout up all over many feet away from where the vine is coming up. So let's look at some of the younger vines and the bark differences between the two. So here I have uh, two native grape vines and two porcelain berry vines. You can start to see the bark on the porcelain berry vine when it's about the size of your thumb. It starts to peel from the sides and is flaky, while the grapevine is starting to form those long strips that kind of peel from the ends. Another important characteristic to look at is the inside of the cut vine, what's called the pith. On the grapevine, 
it's going to be a black pith in the center, while the porcelain berry is going to have a white pith in the center. So it's mid-September right now, which is a really good time to be able to distinguish between porcelain berry and native grapes. What you want to look at is the berries themselves, which on porcelain berry are held upright, as are the flowers, whereas on native grapes, they're going to hang down below underneath the vine, just like the grapes that you would see in the store, like the ones I have here. The porcelain berries are also going to start green at the beginning of the season. As they mature, they're going to turn um, all different colors. They're going to be uh, blue, light purple, and even pink. So how do you control this vine? If you have it on your own property, you can help um, reduce the spread of it to neighboring properties or within your own by pulling the young plants in the spring when the soil is moist. If you've got bigger vines, you can cut them right above the ground around June. That's when they're flowering. If you do that, that's gonna prevent them from producing seed that year. And then you can come in with a shovel, dig out the roots. If you've got more than just a couple vines, there's gonna be a really extensive root system, so that's not gonna be practical. In that case, you're gonna to need to use herbicide on that cut vine. You wanna follow the label whenever you're using herbicide and take all the precautions that are necessary with those bigger infestations. If you'd like to help us conserve our natural areas, please visit the Cincinnati Parks website and sign up to become a volunteer with us. If you'd like more information about porcelain berry, check out the Ohio Invasive Plant Council's website for that information.